um, the short answer is is has blue list um, and and potentially green list slowed down adoption rates. Uh, I think the answer is is undoubtedly uh, it has. Um, however, uh, I remember when when we were at FLIR and we got the spec list for the original SRR program, we kind of looked at it and we're like, this isn't going to work for everybody. The the Ooh. 320 thermal, 12 megapixel uh, RGB camera, this was maybe a quarter of the capability of an X-T2 or a DJI produced payload. And, um, you know, I... Th I I would imagine, Trent, that DIU early in those days was not thinking like this is going to be the de facto list for the entire global drone industry. I, I'd be hard pressed to uh, think those were the conversations going on. But the reality is, is that it was the first list. Um, and unfortunately, today, with how quickly our industry moves and consolidation, there's really only two platforms, maybe three platforms still available from that original list. Um, so I think that this green list is answering the uh, the real issue of the non-DOD federal agencies. Because those are the ones that really adopt at scale. And when, you know, Bobby was talking about volume, volume is, is key here for everything. And the FBI and ATF and, you know, Department of the Interior and the Forestry Service, these are large scale, high volume programs that, in some ways, it feels like we're starting over. Um, and I know we're going to touch, you know, pretty shortly here on, you know, how far behind are we actually as a U.S. drone industry? So I don't I don't want to go too much into that. But um, I've worked intimately with DJI. You've obviously worked intimately with DJI. Their capabilities, uh, in Autel included, their, their capabilities domestically from a technology, labor, supply chain, you name it, surpasses us in every way. Um, so these lists are necessary. And I think that we had an interesting, you know, seat at the table, Randall, where we were a part of one of the very few companies that was dual use mm -hmm. and, and effectively did dual use in both the defense and the industrial market. And I can't tell you guys how messy it was internally with the defense UAS team and the industrial UAS team trying to figure it out. And, you know, Trent mentioned it earlier, the use case, the training requirements, um, the volume and the scale of the Defense Department's drone program, uh, there is no overlap to what we do here. You know, the biggest public safety drone programs are probably state police and they're to the tune of whatever, 15, 20, 25. That's like a, uh, that's a throwaway fleet for a defense department in terms of training. So it, yes, it, it's set us back, but I want to stay optimistic and say that this is a temporary pause. And this is something that's going to get worked out. The green list is still very new. And I know, you know, we're going to get into that with Michael, but um, yeah, it's, it definitely stunted growth a little bit, but, you know, I think everyone on this call and the, the industry at large is trying to figure out the best path forward here. 